nurtures relationships, and helps with SEO. You know, all this talk about SEO, behind SEO are humans, and people tend to forget that. Do the, do the search engines like this? Do the search engines like that? You know, it's people. It's people connecting with you, and that's what your content does. Create useful information that your market wants and needs to build a relationship with them. The reason why we build a website is so people can find out about our products and services. And I would just like to take a show of hands. How many people here are consultants? And how many people here sell a product or some, some product or program on the internet? Okay, we've got a mix of both. Great. But what content am I going to write? Like, how many of you have felt like this? Like, I got to write a content, I got to do a blog post, and what am I going to write? You, you've run out of ideas. You think you've written everything, and you think people have read everything that you've written, and actually they haven't. But what I'm going to do is give you some content uh, ideas. But first, let's talk about content creation challenges. I don't have time to write. I have writer's block. I don't know how to do research. I'm stressed out about constantly having to create fresh content, or I don't have enough resources. You know, some people think they don't have enough budget or they don't have enough team, and really all of that is in your head. And if you just change your attitude about creating content, it's going to be a lot easier. So I want you to think of building a website this way. Creating a website is like painting a picture. You want to block your site out like an artist. That's the way I like to teach my students, is take in the whole totality of building your site. So you first block things out, and I have an example to show you. And as the artist is working on the painting, each, each part of the painting is getting more filled in. As this artist is painting, you always have a sense of what the picture is. And I think that's the same way you should build a site. And it's getting all filled in, and there's the finished picture. So when I teach people to build websites, I say, touch on a lot of different things. Don't just focus on one little thing. If you stay, I mean, learning CSS is great, but make sure you just don't get s stuck there and you're not filling in your content, because that's why people come to your site, is it's for your content. And to get over writer's block, use dummy Latin text. Now, how many people know what Latin text is? OK, most, most of the room. So Latin text, lorem ipsum, a lot of web developers, if you're having them build you a site, will put in this Latin text. But this Latin text gets kind of boring, so I like to use something more fun like bacon, bacon ipsum. So you can go to baconipsum.com and type in how many paragraphs you want, and it gives you bacon, <laughs> bacon, meat, all kinds of stuff. If you're not into meat, if you're vegetarian, there's veggie ipsum, which also makes it fun. So as you're creating your site, you know, have fun with it and this is my favorite, Cupcake Ipsum. And you can check that little box and it adds love into it too. What this does by using this Latin text is it gets you over your writer's block. So you know you want to have an About Us or a My Bio. And that tends to be the one site that trips people up. As people will start writing their bio and they'll go, oh man, I should have done this in my career and I should have done that. And, you know, all this head trash comes in. So by using one of these Ipsums, and there's a site called Meet the Ipsums, which has all different kinds. So there's beer, there's coffee, there's cat, there's TV, there's all zombie Ipsum. That one's pretty fun. Getting over writer's block, which is important. The other thing this does is when you're building your site, and you know you want an About Us page, and this is just the 2016 theme. If you look at that, it doesn't really have any meaning to how your site's going to be balanced. You know, that's why here I put the Veggie Ipsum. 
it gives you a feel for how the site's going to look. I'll have people say, can you help me with my page design? And there's nothing there. So your eye is looking way too much at other elements, and you're not having a really good sense of what your site's going to look like. So this is what I mean by the painter painting the picture. Um, so here's a case study of one of my students, Veronica Marchese. She's a licensed psychotherapist. So she's not a web designer, not a web developer. She just wanted to be able to build her site herself. So I, she started out with this 2010 theme, which is a pretty old theme, but it's a very simple theme, and that's, that's why I like it. So out of the box, hello world. Then she started to block in some uh, content and put a picture on the side. Now, now she's adding some colors, trying to get a sense of the colors she wants to have for her site. So as you can see, she's sort of working on the whole thing at the same time. Then she's picking uh, more specific colors and some pictures. And then here was her new site. So really always just keep working on your whole site at the same time. But now I want to dive into 10 content ideas to help you create content for your website. Idea number one is survey your audience. So many people don't do this. So use surveys, blog posts, social media, etc. Ask people, and here you can see at the bottom, um, I just asked a question to my community, what questions do you have about integrating email marketing to your website? So if you don't want to buy survey tools, you know, you can ask on social media what people want. And here is um, some resources and in the, on Matt's page, there's going to be a list of these resources so you don't have to write everything down. SurveyMonkey, I believe they still have a free version of SurveyMonkey. Um, and the thing with surveys, you have to be careful, is you have to be mindful of how you phrase the question because it's going to affect the answers you get. So just, just keep that in mind. Uh, quiz and Survey Master plugin, WP Polls, YOP Poll plugin, Facebook Poll plugin, Poll Daddy. There's lots of different ways to take polls. Polling your audience will give you content ideas. YouTube. I love using YouTube as a resource for blog posts ideas. Um, and actually, I wrote a, a great post from Matt had on social media posted this YouTube video that was hysterical. And I saw that and I was like, what a great idea. It was about remembering your passwords. And so I took that YouTube video, put it on my site, wrote a blog post about the video, and voila, I had my blog post for the week. And it wasn't my video. You see, you can put other people's videos on your site. The copyright is such that if you're using someone else's video, as long as it's publicly searchable on YouTube, the whole copyright issue is whoever created and uploaded the video. It's not on you. But you can go to TED. There's TED Talks about every industry. Find an awesome TED Talk, embed it in your site, make an article about it, and there you don't have to come up with ideas on your own. You do want to watch for if they've got ads, or so you want to make sure you watch the whole video. But I love using YouTube as a resource. Now, you can always have your own YouTube account and upload videos, but this is an easy way for you to create content valuable to your market, and you don't have to create the video. Um, embedding a YouTube video is really easy, and that might be a little small. But when you find a video you like, you just click on embed, it gives you the code, boom, copy and paste, and you put it into your site. All right, number three is news headlines and current events. News headlines are often written by high-priced copywriters. So if you just read, especially tabloids, you know, seven foods to, seven foods to make in your coffee pot, 
Seven ba 17 bizarre preschool rules you won't believe exist. I mean, you can take that kind of formula and rewrite it for your own industry. Um, and now you've got a headline which will spark ideas um, to write your content about. You know, grilled cheese 25 ways. People like numbers a lot. So, you know, top 10, et cetera. News headlines are also great eye-catching subject line examples. So, how to stand up to a bad boss, um, going once, going twice, going to be confused. And there's a resource um, in the resources, and there's an emotional marketing value headline analyzer that you can, you can look at. But really, you know, go look at tabloids, people magazines, and help that spark ideas for you and your business. Number four, interview industry leaders. You can all probably think of an industry leader in your area of expertise that's not you, and you can contact them and say, hey, I'd like to interview you on this concept. And what that does is for that expert, they're now getting more exposure, and for you, you're now getting content that you can put up on your site. Uh, Hungry Dog Blog has, does interviews with top chefs. So he is just coming up with these interviews with these top chefs. Chefs are wanting to get their name out. It's a great way that you don't have to think of something new to put on your site. Images and graphics for inspiration. Sometimes I'll find an image and I'll say, hey, that's a neat idea for a blog post. And um, they make great content and they make your uh, site more appealing. I mean, just think of magazines, how often they've got a picture breaking up the text. And we get so busy that we're writing our content, we forget, hey, let's put imagery in there and you can add images to your text uh, as well. And here are some no or low cost image resources. How many people have heard of Canva? Almost everybody, that's great. Uh, what Canva is, canva.com for those of you who don't know about it, it's an online image creation tool that designers have already designed the images for you and all you have to do is replace their words with your words and you're totally allowed to use it and it's a great way to create graphics. Pixabay, Morgfile, Unsplash, Stock, Snap, boy that's hard to say, um, are other low or no cost resources. Um, I love, Pixabay happens to be my favorite because they make the terms of usage really easy to understand and they're free so you can go to Pixabay if you don't want to pay for an image go to Pixabay find an image bring it into Canva add some words to it boom you've got more content the number six use the top X formula so top five plugins you should have for your WordPress site or top 10 reasons why you should consider eliminating carbs. People love top 10 lists. I mean, remember David Letterman? How many of you remember David Letterman? I would always stay up for his top 10 list. And I might not watch the whole show, but I always wanted to hear what his top 10 was. People just love that. That's why you see it in magazines, newspapers, as headlines. And if you could come up with, you know, top 10 reasons why you should hire a business coach or top, seven re or top seven things to avoid when hiring a mortgage broker. You know, think of your industry, come up with that, and that'll spark ideas and make it really easy to write. This little link at the bottom at HubSpot blog dash topic dash generator, go there, it's in the resources, that'll help you you put in some keywords and it will write headlines for you. 
start a podcast. How many people here have a podcast? Okay, not that many. Podcasting is not that hard to do. And if you are a talker instead of a writer, talk your content and put it on a podcast. And um, get it into iTunes. It's not hard to do at all. Uh, this is Kim Doyle's The WordPress Chick, and I don't know how often she comes out with a podcast. Um, podcasting shouldn't be that long. The average commute's about 20 to 30 minutes, so you want to keep your podcast within that time, because that's when people are going to listen to you when they're commuting. Number eight, and this is one that I always forget, repurpose your other paid content. So I'm always, you're always, I'm constantly thinking, okay, what am I going to write? What am I going to write? And then I think, you know, I could just go into my paid course and pull out parts of it. So if you've written a book, you know, pull out part of your book and put that on your site. If you've got CDs, courses, lectures, membership content, you know, that's good stuff, and it doesn't hurt to take part of your paid content and put it out there as free content. Number nine is PLR articles. How many people have heard of private label rights? Oh, not that many, just a few. Private label rights are people who create content and then they sell it and you can reuse it. So it's like buying someone else's articles or buying somebody else's content. The key with buying PLR articles is you generally don't want to use it verbatim because other people are buying the same article. But what you can do with it is think of it as a first draft. So if you find a, a PLR, private label rights article, they also have graphics, there's all kinds of different PLR. But let's talk about words. If you find someone else's PLR article and you buy it, and it's generally pretty cheap, and like under 100 bucks, 50 bucks, 10 bucks, it's all over the map, that's your first draft. And then just rewrite it. Like sometimes for me, starting with a blank page is really hard, but if I start with a first draft, that kind of gets me going and then I change words and I move things around and now all of a sudden it's your own. So it's a great way to kind of get over that uh, writer's block. Um, and get help from others, ghostwriter, copywriter, editor, editor virtual assistant. Um, I will often come up with an idea and talk to my virtual assistant and say, I've got this idea, research these things, and then she'll write a first draft for me, and then I go in and edit it and change it around and you know, maybe replace pictures or whatever. And that really helps get me going, because we're all pretty busy, and you don't always have time to do it. And by having someone else start it for you uh, makes it a lot easier. And then number 10 is Leverage public domain content. So this is a little bit different than PLR, right? PLR, somebody's writing it with the intention to sell it. Public domain is works in the public domain that are, are those whose intellectual property rights have expired, have been forfeited, or are inapplicable. No longer restricted by copyright. So anything created before 1923 is copyright free. And, but you always want to check the copyright status of any uh, image before using it. Like I'll find images on Wikipedia, but you have to check, they'll, they'll say if you can use it or not use it. So public domain works is also um, a great idea. So let me recap 10 content ideas, surveys, YouTube videos, news headlines, current events, interviewing experts, images sparking ideas for you, top X formula, podcasts, repurposing paid content to free, and outsourcing your content or using public domain materials.
but I want to remind you to keep it simple. Think People Magazine. People Magazine is really easy to read. Like you can buy it, you can read it, and you kind of feel good about yourself because you got through it. If you write content, <laughs> that's why I love People Magazine. You're like, oh, I've accomplished something. I read this magazine. If you write, now depends upon your audience. If you're writing for a highly technical or scientific, then you might need to write at a higher grade level. But if you write at a lower grade level, you're gonna, you're gonna, people are gonna be able to read it, understand it. So you want to make sure you don't, your words aren't too difficult. And in one of the resources, there is a link for you to put your words in, and it will tell you what grade level it's at and how readable it is. But the main thing is to have fun. This is why I love WordPress. WordPress is fun because you can change it if you make a mistake, like Matt showed us, like how you can make a mistake and you can recover. WordPress is very forgiving. So if something gets messed up, you can just fix it. And if you have fun while you're doing it and not get stressed out, you're going to be way more successful. My name is Christina Hills. You can find me online um, or Christina at WebsiteCreationWorkshop.com. Do you have any questions about content creation? You have that one room, Christina, the top X formula, you HubSpot.com, something? Um, it is in the resources, the top, the, from HubSpot, so I don't, let me okay. see if I can, I can try to back it up. Okay, where did it go? hubspot.com forward slash blog dash topic dash generator. You go there, you put in keywords for your area of expertise and it will come up with headlines. And then from the headlines, you can write articles from there. And I finished way early, so we have lots of time to talk about or take more questions. Can you talk a little bit more about the copyright, the uh, uh, environment of copyright for um, images and also you mentioned on Wikipedia as an example of how you define if you said you're allowed to use it or not. Um, is that like in the, uh, in the code or is that? Okay, great question. So the question was about copyrights for images. And I want to make a point, don't go to Google Images and download images. It's a bad idea. The only reason why you might want to go to Google Images is it'll give you ideas. But you, you know, oh gee, I could use an elephant image. But don't take, don't take the image from Google Images, like purchase it or get it from one of these other sites. So what I was talking about is when you go to these stock sites to get images, you have to look at the license, like are you allowed to use it for personal or can you use it for business or do you have to attribute it, meaning you have to put who the photographer was. So you need to check what the licensing is for that image, the rights for the image. So Wikipedia, you have to make sure you're very clear on there's images in there that you have to put attribution and then there's images you can use as you wish. Part of why I like pixabay.com is they just make it really easy to understand. So your brain doesn't have to like go through all the different versions of licensing and what it means. It basically says most of the images on pixabay and the way they make money is the top images are from paid sites. But generally, the images on Pixabay are free to use on commercial or personal use. And then morgue file, most of that licensing is you just have to change the image. So I might crop it, and that's changed the image. What these sites don't want you to do is collect them and start your own image, you know, iStock photo type business. So they don't want you to do that. But yeah, you don't, and sometimes you can't find the image you want on these free sites, so then I go to iStock or Deposit Photos or one of Getty Images. Is it just specific to photos? Did you mention like, you know, you take a YouTube video, you can embed it on your site, and that's how you're going to 
YouTube is like its own category. So the way the rights work with YouTube is the person who's uploading whatever they're uploading, the legality stuff is on them. Like you can't upload something. And I once took a video of my daughter dancing in some little school play. And there was music in the background. And I didn't think anything of it. You know, it was from a CD that they're playing on stage. And YouTube blocked that video because they recognized that that was a song, and I had no clue. So they just, they blocked it. I'm like, okay, no big deal, I'll take it down. But if you find his video, and it's public, like you can search and his video shows up, you are allowed to embed it, and the copyright issues are on him, not on you. You can't use his photo, no. If he put the, vi the photo up in YouTube and added music to it, that's on him. So with YouTube, that's how it is. But yeah, you don't want to take other people's photos. Yeah, yeah. Yes? All right, and just a quick follow-up to that, the whole thing about intellectual property now, there now exist companies who will go to Getty Images and say, I will troll the metadata of graphics where somebody stupidly just did a drag and drop and uploaded it to their happy little blog making quilts, right? And they will troll the back end and they will then attack that person and say, you've already violated it, you owe us $800, and then split the money with Getty. So it used to be like you could sort of gray area it. There's no more gray area. Because if all, the, when all these photos have metadata behind it that we can't see, and so, right, literally, unless you buy it, I just, I wouldn't. I yeah, there's lots of stories in these Facebook groups I'm in of, P of web designers being hit with fines and sometimes it's the client that gave the image to the designer. So if you're working with a client, you want to ask them, where did you get this picture? Because lots of clients don't know. They're like, oh, I just found this image. So yeah, you have to be really careful. Oh, wow. So, I haven't heard of that. I've heard of them shutting down a video, but I haven't heard of people getting fined. You were referring to the question, it was my wife's department, and I do a lot of work in that industry. Um, it's because when you upload a video to YouTube, you are agreeing to a public license. If I'm a photographer, I own all my property. So unless, like, I go to get images, I'm agreeing to a license to sell you the photo. You're not allowed to do it. But if I go upload my own photo, like we do photography sessions for websites and buildings, um, I still own that. There's no agreement that I'm making that you can take my photo. But when you upload something to YouTube, you're agreeing when you're uploading it that now the public can take it. Can, can take and embed that, that video. You can also limit the embedding. So if on my video, I can say, no, I don't want anyone to embed this video. Choose that. And then you'll go to the embed code and it won't be there. Great point. So let me just repeat that so it gets onto the recording. If you have a YouTube channel, you can limit other people's ability to embed or not. But if you are creating your own videos and putting them on YouTube, you kind of want your videos getting out there. So that's, you want to have that mindset if you've got your own YouTube channel. The point of my, uh, I brought up YouTube was to make you relax, like, hey, I don't have to come up with my own videos. And I've done that. It's like, boy, I'd like a video on explaining this internet concept. Hey, and I found other videos, and that just saved me a ton of time. All right, any other questions? Yes? Um, when you put somebody else's video on there, do you have to say, I got this video from blah, blah, No, blah. not with YouTube. You don't have to. No, but with other things, you, if, if it came from a website and there's a video on there, do you have to say? I would not take a video off of somebody's website at all. I just it's wouldn't just do it. YouTube. YouTube, Vimeo, I don't use Vimeo a lot, so if somebody else knows the answer, but I'm guessing Vimeo, you know, YouTube is the biggest one, so I focus on that, but Vimeo, you can probably also do the same thing. Yeah, that's just taking this idea. I mean, 
maybe it's not YouTube that does that, but I, I got a video from somewhere else that I had permission to <coughs> it was it was a video it was, I was in it, so I mean I, I wanted to put it on my website, but it just started playing automatically and I couldn't get it not to and I tried all sorts of things. So if you had raw video uh, .mp4, then you'll need to get a plugin, like a, a WordPress plugin, a video embedder, to put that on your site, and then figure out the controls so that it won't play automatically. Some people like videos playing automatically. Some people don't like videos playing automatically. Yeah. Yeah. yeah if you just take the URL of the actual video from the URL bar, drop it inside of your editor. That's right. It'll automatically embed it. Won't that's right. That's a relatively recent addition to uh, WordPress. Relatively recent. I don't remember. I'm so used to using a, um, a plugin that I just keep using plugins. I think it was like 4.2 or 4.3. It was longer ago, so obviously something else went wrong because I did that and it's still out of place. I think it was. Well, there, there are the metrics. Try it with a plugin. Can, there is actually a meta code. If you just use the embed code that you get off of uh, YouTube, there's. You can, this wasn't you, YouTube, it was somewhere else. Oh, it's not YouTube. It's no, not YouTube. Okay, that's a different path. Okay, yeah. You could take that, open your own YouTube account, and upload that video into YouTube and see if that works for you. Okay, I'll try that. Yeah, that might work. Yeah. All right. Okay, thank you, everyone. Thank you.